Assessment of thorax and lungs. Um, good morning, ma. Good morning, ma. Uh, may I know your name, po, and your birthday? Uh, my name is Kelly Dunisha, po, and my birthday is on September 20, 2000. Okay, ma'am. I'm Nurse Adrian, and today I will be assessing your thorax or your chest, ni po, and then your lungs. Um, in order to do that, I will be needing your cooperation po para mag-accurate po yung assessment natin for today. Is that okay, ma'am? Okay, thank you. First, inspect the shape and symmetry of the thorax from posterior and lateral views. While the client sits with her arms at her sides, stand behind her and observe the position of scapulae and the shape and configuration of the chest wall. Then inspect the spinal alignment for deformities. The spine must be vertically aligned and the right and left shoulders and hips are of the same height. Then palpate the posterior thorax. Palpation may be performed with one or both hands. Palpate for tenderness, warmth, pain, and other sensation. Palpate the posterior chest for respiratory excursion. Place your hands on the posterior chest wall with your thumbs at the level of T9 or T10 and pressing together in a small skin fold. There must be a full and systemic expansion and the thumbs must be separated 2 to 3 cm during deep inspiration when assessing for the respiratory excursion. And then palpate the chest for vocal or tactile fremitus. Use the palmar surface of the hand at the base of the metacarpophalangeal joints to assess for fremitus. As you move your hand to each area, ask the client to say 99. Assess all areas for symmetry and intensity of vibration. Fremitus should remain symmetric for bilateral positions. Then percuss the thorax. Percuss for tone starting at the apices of the scapulae and across the top of both shoulders. Resonance is the percussion tone elicited over normal lung tissue. Percussion elicits flat tones over the scapula. And then auscultate the chest using the flat disc diaphragm of the stethoscope. Mom, and here, like, see, look up. Place the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly and directly on the posterior chest wall at the apex of the lung at C7. Then ask the client to breathe deeply through her mouth for each area of auscultation so you can best hear inspiratory and expiratory sounds. There must be three types of normal breath sounds that may be auscultated, bronchial, bronchovesicular, and vesicular sounds. Ma'am, can you breathe normally po? And then inspect breathing patterns. Respiration should be even and smooth. Chest movement should be symmetrical. Then inspect the anterior chest for shape and symmetry. 
have the client sit with her arms at her side, stand in front of the client and assess the sternum from the anterior and lateral viewpoint. Watch for sternal retraction and observe quality and pattern of breathing. And then palpate the anterior chest. Palpate for tenderness, sensation, and surface masses. Start with your hand positioned over the left ventricle and move your hand left to right, comparing findings bilaterally. Palpate the anterior chest for respiratory excursion. Place your hands on the client's anterolateral wall with your thumbs along the costal margins and pointing toward the cephoid process. Then thumbs must move outward in a symmetric fashion from the midline. Then palpate tactile fremitus in the same manner as for the posterior chest. 99 Using the sequence for palpating the anterior chest, palpate for fremitus using the same technique as the posterior thorax. Then percuss the anterior chest systematically. Percuss the apices above the clavicles. And then percuss the intercostal spaces across and down comparing sides. Resonance is the percussion tone elicited over normal lung tissue. It elicits dullness over breast, heart, and liver tissue. Tympani is detected over the stomach and flatness is detected over the muscles and bones. Auscultate the anterior chest. First, place the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly and directly on the anterior chest wall. Auscultate from the apices of the lungs slightly above the clavicles to the bases of the lungs at the sixth rib. Ask the client to breathe deeply through his mouth in an effort to avoid transmission of sounds that may occur with nasal breathing. Listen at each side for at least one complete respiratory cycle. Follow the sequence for anterior auscultation of the thorax. And then document findings in the client's record. Assessment of breast and axilla. First is inspect the breast for size, symmetry, and contour while the client is in a sitting position. The client should sit comfortably and erect, with the gown and the waist to both breasts are exposed. Then one breast may normally be slightly larger than the other. Then inspect the skin of the breast for localized discoloration or hyperpigmentation, retraction or dimpling, localized hypervascular areas, swelling or edema. And lastly, color should be consistent with the rest of the body. Observe for thickening, tautness, redness, rash or ulcerations. Then observe the breast for shape, surface, characteristics and bilateral pool of suspensory ligaments. Then emphasize any retraction by having the client raise arm above the head, push the hands together with elbows flexed and press the hands down on the hips. And then inspect the areola area for size, shape, symmetry, color, surface characteristics and any masses or lesions. Areola is normally round or oval and moist equal in size. It is also pink in light-skinned people and brown in dark-skinned people. It also darkens during pregnancy. Then inspect the nipples for size, shape, position, color, discharge, and lesions. Nipples are normally the same color as the areola and are equal in size and shape. Nipples are generally inverted but may be flat or inverted. It should be free of cracks, crust, erosions, ulcerations, pigment changes, or discharge. And then palpate the axillary, supraclavicular, and infraclavicular lymph nodes. Flex the arm at the elbow and support it in your arm. Note the presence of axillary hair. Confirm the axilla is free of redness, rashes, 
lumps or lesions with the palmar surface of your fingers reach deep into the axilla and then gently palpate the anterior border of the axilla moving downward against the central aspect of the rib cage continue to move down the posterior border and along the inner aspect of the upper arm using firm pressure in small circular movements palpate above and below the clavicle and then palpate the breast for masses tenderness and any discharge from the nipples ask the client to lie down cover the breast that is not being examined place a small pillow or roll tower under the shoulder of the side to be palpated and position the client's arm over her head the maneuver flattens the breast tissue over the chest wall and then use the finger pads of the first three fingers in a slightly rotary motion to press the breast tissue against the chest wall be sure to palpate the entire breast several patterns may be used but the most common is the concentric circle pattern start at the periphery of the breast and palpate into small circles until you reach the nipple try not to lift the finger pads of the breast as you move from one area to another palpation then continues into the tail of spence and then palpate the areola and the nipples for masses. Compress the tissue between the thumb and forefinger to observe drainage. Confirm that the nipple is free of discharge, that is non-tender, and that the areola is free of masses. And then document findings in the client's record. Then assessment of heart and central vessels. Simultaneously inspect and palpate the precordium for the presence of abnormal pulsations, lifts, or heaves. Lay your fingers slightly over each of the five precordial landmarks as firm pressure obliterate pulsations. There are no visible pulsations on the aortic and pulmonic areas. There is no presence of heaves or lifts. And then, auscultate the heart in all five key landmarks, aortic, pulmonic, herbs point tricuspid and apical begin auscultation using the diaphragm of the stethoscope for transmission of high frequency sounds listen to several lob dub cycles in all five cardiac landmarks twice first identify s1 and s2 then listen for s3 and s4 and murmurs and friction rubs locate aortic valve landmark and listen for s2 auscultate pulmonic valve listening for S2, herbs point, auscultate for murmurs, tricuspid area, assess for S1, instruct client to hold her breath, while the client holds her breath, the splitting disappears, mitral bulb, assess for S1. And then palpate the carotid artery. Palpate each carotid artery alternately by placing the pads of the index and middle fingers medial to the sternocleidomastoid muscles on the neck. Note amplitude and contour of the pulse, elasticity of the artery, and any thrills. The strength of the pulse is evaluated on a scale from 0 to 4. And lastly, inspect the jugular veins for distension. Stand on the right side of the client and the client should be in supine position with the torso elevated 30 to 45 degrees. And then let the client to turn the head slightly to the left. Shine a tangential light source onto the neck to increase visualizations of pulsations to cast shadows on the client's neck. Observe for distension, protrusion, or bulging. It should not be distended, bulging, or protruding at 45 degrees or greater. The jugular veins normally distend for only 3 cm above the sternal angle when the client is lying at the 45 degree angle. And then document findings in the client's record.